Hello everyone and welcome to round 5 of uh, this year's US Chess Championship which is actually round 6 only one round has been eliminated from existence itself due to yesterday's events if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about uh, well something that happened um, after the game Fabiano Caruana versus Christopher Yu that I've shown in the previous video and I've noticed a lot of you guys were uh, wondering why I'm not talking about what happened after the game and I had no idea what happened after the game as I only saw the game and then I started recording my video only later I found out what actually happened so uh, to give you a better idea this is what happened after the actual game He's this is the video like so uh, you, you see there Christopher <laughs> rips out the, the uh, by the way did you see three in a row is ripping off uh, the, the by the score sheet. Sheet. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know so that I feeling too this incident uh, but this is not as important as what happened after that and to, well to understand what happened after that we have to turn to the official statement from the St. Louis Chess Club. Uh, now it says at the conclusion of his game on October 16th, Grandmaster Christopher Yu uh, uh, crumpled his score sheet, stormed out of the tournament hall and struck a videographer from behind. The St. Louis Chess uh, Club immediately provided assistance to the videographer and called the police who responded. Chief Arbiter Chris Bird expelled Yu from the tournament due to gross violations of our code of conduct uh, and the US uh, Chess Safe Play policy. The St. Louis Chess Club fully supports the decision and has banned you from the club. Uh, use results from the from rounds one to five will be annulled and the tournament standings will be adjusted accordingly players scheduled to face you in the remaining rounds will receive by granting them an additional rest today we take player conduct seriously and do not tolerate violations of our standards uh, we acted swiftly to address the situation ensuring a respectful and safe environment for everyone involved uh, in the tournament now uh, of course, if you don't know what happened, if, if you haven't seen what happened, you could draw many conclusions like Grandmaster Ivan Sokolov uh, has done so uh, publicly in the post above. He says top sport produces excessive adrenaline, excessive anger, mostly only at yourself, induces not being able to control yourself uh, or your immediate emotions uh, deeds. In such situations, you just want to get the hell out of there. Probably what you wanted, punishment is draconian and hugely excessive. To which uh, Levon Aronian uh, responds, even I saw the video and it's awful. As, okay, uh, Levon also being um, uh, a, a US Grandmaster now uh, obviously has access to certain people who do have the video. I saw the video and it's awful. It was a well-prepared punch to a completely innocent person. The club's action is very mild, I assure you. We need to acknowledge that chess is a very tough mental sport. Mental health awareness and training for our young players is a must. So uh, we'll uh, see how this... Uh, uh, continues how you know young Christopher will be will be treated after this uh, you know uh, w without seeing the footage I guess we we can't really know for ourselves what happened but uh, I mean we do have trusted officials and if Levon saw it and uh, this is Levon's opinion uh, you know Levon is uh, w one of the greatest people in the chess world uh, I, I believe we have no uh reason not to trust him but yeah we'll see what happens and i will keep you guys informed uh one less player in the tournament uh, and one round completely eliminated from existence uh, fabi's point from yesterday will not count but uh his rating that he won uh from that game will count towards his own rating uh so yeah that's it regarding the the uh, the, the drama and now let us see what happened in this game fabiano Caruana versus uh, grigori oparin uh, a long, long time ago, uh, when he was 15 years old, he won the uh, the under 20 US uh, Russian Championship, which is uh, quite a quite an achievement. And I mean, he's a pretty incredible player. He defeated some very, very strong players like uh, Ralph Mavidov, like. Uh, uh, Fedosev, like, um, I don't know, Boris Gelfand, uh, many, many strong players, but Fabiano Caruana is a different type of beast, uh, so let's see how he does against him. Uh, Fabi with white opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to c6, uh, and a bishop to c4. We have knight to f6 going for the two knights defense, d3, h6, and now castles is the most standard applied here, some knight b to d2, action maybe c3, but Fabi plays pawn to a3 which is extremely rare uh, against the two knights defense we have bishop to c5 knight to c3 and pawn to a6 as b4 has now been prepared you have to have a 
and, and escape square for the bishop, bishop to e3, uh, and now pawn to d6. And Fabi just trades, bishop captures, d captures, and there are some games where knight to d5 and bishop to d5 were played, but here we have castles kingside, and it is now already as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. Uh, okay, queen to d6 by Grigori, uh, knight to d5. We have a trade, knight captures, e captures, attacking the knight, knight to e7, uh, and queen to e1, saying, okay, how do you defend the e5 pawn? Uh, Fabi's position here is a little bit weird, but of course he has plans of undoubling the, uh, the pawns, and the bishop might come alive uh, sometime in the future. So pawn to f6, defending an e5, and now knight to d2, preparing to bring the knight to e4, and, uh, well... You can't really play f5 to prevent this because then the pawn gets attacked again. And uh, uh, if bishop to f5, which was played in the game, then knight to e4. And Fabi now either gets a beautiful knight on e4 or uh, Grigori has to capture on e4 and allow Fabi to undouble his pawns. And we have bishop captures on e4. It's uh, the, the top engine move, so it definitely makes sense. Even though you don't want to do it, you kind of know you have to do it. D captures on e4 and castles king side. And Fabi strikes with pawn to b4. Okay, what do you play here? We have pawn to b6, b captures on c5, queen captures now with an attack on the bishop, and queen to b4. Fabi offers a queen trade, but it's not a queen trade you can really accept, because if you trade here, uh, it's, uh, well, your a6 pawn is hanging, and also there's the problem of d6 check winning the knight. So your best bet would be to play b5, but then you can no longer play a5, and this is just a permanently weak pawn. Fabio would just double up on the a-file and, uh, well, win, win, win a pawn on the queen side, maybe even two pawns, and then win the game, probably. So after queen to b4, we have queen back to d6, saying, okay, we trade, but we trade on d6, and Fabi says, yes, that's exactly what I want. Uh, queen captures c, captures, and rook f to b1. Just playing simple chess, uh, nicely trading, and while Grigori does have a 2 to 1 advantage on the queen side, there's still the, the existence of the c pawn, so it's not like you can easily create a pass pawn or anything, and... Uh, if anything, the, the B pawn will become uh, weak. We have knight to C8, defending the pawn. Uh, you could also consider pawn to B5, uh, and you probably should play it, but then again, uh, you, you will give a target to, to, to Fabi before uh, assaulting it later on. So after C captures, uh, we have rook F to B1, knight to C8, defending, and now bishop back to E2. We have pawn to F5, uh, and pawn to f3, rook to a7, and rook to b3, preparing to double up on the b file, f captures on e4, f captures, and now rook to c7, going after the c2 pawn, and Fabi advances it to c4, where it's nicely defended by the bishop, uh, g6, and now pawn to a4, interesting move would be uh, definitely pawn to c5, but I think uh, uh, Fabi doesn't want to trade, uh, you know, for for just for the sake of trading. He wants to continue building the position. a4, we have pawn to a5, makes sense. You want to put your pawns on dark squares, as Fabi only has a light square bishop. Uh, and now rook to c1. We have pawn to h5 and pawn to g3. Now Fabi wants to play pawn to h4 and fix the pawns on light squares so his light square bishop can have some tar uh, targets in the future. We have king to g7, pawn to h4, and now rook f to f7, uh, sort of shifting the move back to Fabi, saying I'm happy with uh, I'm happy with uh, the way things are. If you want, you can push king to g2. We have rook f6, bishop to f3, uh, and now rook f back to f7. Uh, we have bishop to e2, and now rook to f6, rook to a1 by Fabi, uh, and rook f to f7. Just waiting to see what Fabi plays. Fabi goes rook to f3, offers a rook trade, and now. Best would be to just uh, wait with rook to b7. But Grigori decides to trade with rook captures on f3, king captures on f3, and now knight to e7. Okay, still nothing too crazy, but it does allow Fabi uh, the possibility of a certain tactic that if... Uh, not handled with care could result in a you know in in a game winning scenario. We have rook to b1, the, uh, attacking the b6 pawn. Now how do you defend it? Okay, rook b7. It's not like there's anything that can happen here. King to e3 and now knight to g8. Okay, we have pawn to g4. H captures bishop, captures knight back to f6, attacking the bishop and bishop to e6. And now how do you how do you proceed from here? Uh, rook to b8, again, just waiting to see what what Fabi does. But rook to b8 allows uh, for, for a really, really cool maneuver uh, that I will 
let you guys figure out for yourselves, feel free to pause the video and try to find the best move for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, no doubt you guys have found it as you guys are such amazing players. Uh, but just in case, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to c5. And that is why rook to b8, although a perfectly fine looking waiting move, knight back to e8 would have been better to cover the d6 square. But yeah, rook to b8 was played and Fabi lunges forward with pawn to c5. And now, okay, of course you cannot capture with this pawn, the rook is hanging. But you have to capture with this pawn, otherwise pawn to c6 and Fabi gets a monster past uh, c pawn here d captures and now pawn to d6 that's why the knight on e8 would have been great preventing this tactic altogether and now rook to h8 just giving up uh, the, the pawn on b6 uh for 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 that pawn on h4 uh the problem is it's not easy to hold on to everything let's say you play king f8 you just uh, keep defending the b pawn what's fabi's plan here really the plan is king to d3 and after a move is made doesn't really matter rook b2 and now you put black in a really weird position where you really can't move anything if the knight moves loses control over e4 you just get the king uh, into the game uh, if if the rook moves, you will pick up the b6 pawn, and if you play something like king to e8, then rook to f2, and there is no defense. Either you lose the knight, or you will get checkmated. So it would be pretty bad. You could move the knight, let's say, but then again, king to c4, knight f6, you're gonna play rook to b3, knight captures on e4, king d5, and after knight f6, check king c6, and there is no defense here. That's just completely winning. So after d6, rook to h8, that's why Grigori... I played this line offering the b6 pawn, but Fabi just goes pawn to d7. He doesn't even bother capturing the b6 pawn. Rook to d8 defending and only now rook captures on b6. We have king to f8, now comes bishop to c4 and king to g7. Uh, so you can move the knight, the g7, uh, g6 pawn will not be a target, or if you play knight captures on d7, which looks like uh, something you could do, then rook captures on g6, but okay, king to g7, now the pawn is defended, uh, bishop to b5, now defending the d7 pawn, even though it's attacked twice, you can't really capture it, if you capture with the rook, then you give up the rook, if you capture with the knight, a nice rook b7 wins the game, so king to f7, uh, now rook to c6 looks crazy as you just blocked your own bishop from defending the d7 pawn uh, but even though you can't capture it you kind of have to because it is the top move but it's also losing just as just as just as well knight captures on d7 was played now bishop to c4 check beautifully done by fabi king to e7 uh, other moves don't really help you if you go if you go back then just uh, rook d6 and sorry and bishop to b5 will win win you the piece here so king to e7 giving up the the g6 pawn rook to e6 with check first king to f7 and now rook to uh, rook captures on e5, opens up a discovery from the bishop, king to f8, and rook e6. Again, trying to gobble up the g6 pawn, rook to b8, hoping that Fabi gobbles up the g6 pawn so you have some counterplay with uh, rook to b4, but here, bishop to b5, and he was in this position, or rather, no, he wasn't in this position. Uh, he, he tried to defend rook to b7, uh, rook captures on g6 was played, and now after knight to e5 attacking the rook, rook to g5, and he was in this position on move 54, that Grigori Oparin resigned the game, and another another beautiful victory for Fabiano Caruana, who, even though his last game against Christopher Yu doesn't count for the standings, just continues winning, so it doesn't really matter, and he maintains a full point lead uh, ahead of the field. Uh, the problem here is the knight is hanging, if you move the knight, then just rook captures on c5, you will be up to a pass point, so of course that is completely winning and if you try to defend with something like what can you play rook e7 doesn't really matter you will just uh, further attack the knight the knight will again have to move and then you will capture the pawn the bishop controls all of the knight square so you can't go there you can't go here you can't go here you can't go here only remaining square is f7 and okay d7 because it's defended but yeah once uh, the the rook captures uh, the uh, one you will capture the knight and then capture the pawn two extra pawns of course completely winning uh, you know, in your hands, in your uncle's hands, and especially in Fabi's hands. So yeah, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, victory for Fabiano Caruana in the round uh, five, but actually round six of the US Chess Championship. Hope you enjoyed it. And if we get some extra info on the incident, I will, of course, uh, keep you guys informed. But yeah, seem, uh, for, for the moment, seems that that's that. Christopher is out of the tournament. And uh, well, we'll see what happens.
Uh, so, I yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Danush, and uh, I would like to thank Ivan Sterling, Yus van Verde, Jean Paul Londona, and BulletChestThriller.com for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And if you haven't seen my previous video, the Lila versus Stockfish game, uh, you know, Improve your day. See you soon.